what's up guys, Bajiri here. Gonna be bringing you some of an awesome leg workout I had yesterday. Right here I'm just getting warmed up with uh, 205. And now somebody asked me in the comments how do I normally get warmed up. He mentioned that he likes to do about 20 minutes on the elliptical or something like that. And I did used to warm up like that when I was a little bit younger. But over the years, if I do cardio, I prefer to do it sort of at the end of my workout. And in order to get warmed up, what I like to do is some really, really light sets of whatever exercise it is that, that I'm about to perform. And I usually do my big compound lifts before I do anything else that day. So for example, today is my leg day, so I was warming up with like body weight squats, doing um, squats with just the bar, and doing some stretching in between that. And I don't really have any sort of scientifically grounded reason for doing that. That's just what ends up making me feel good and what ends up helping me get my mind right, which is the other really important part of a warm-up. It's not only do you want to actually get your, your muscles and your ligaments warmed up, but you actually want to get your mind focused and ready for what you're about to do. So usually by the time I get done with my first couple sets of the body weight squats and then the bar squats and then squats at 135, after my 135 squats, I'm usually pretty warmed up. But really I am doing, you know, anywhere from like 10 to 12 warm-up sets, like I'm doing that with little finger quotes, warm-up sets with body weight squats, bar squats, squats at 135, and stretching and, you know, just moving around in between sets just to get warmed up. And I'll do that same sort of thing with bench press. Like, I'll bench the bar a couple times, stretch around, do some 135 sets, stretch a little bit, and then I start putting on a little bit more weight. Hoodie comes off, you get ready to rock, and shit gets real. That being said, there are still phases to sort of getting into your workout. And for me today, one of the phases that actually clicked for me was when I finished my uh, warm-up sets with 205. Uh, that's when I realized, you know, it's time to work hard. Time to really, really sort of flip that switch with the intensity. And instead of just sort of going through the motions, really start adding some power and driving through these squats. Because on my mind the whole time was one thing to do 315 at some point during the workout. So I knew in order to do that, I had to start getting my mind and my body connected, focusing on getting balanced and staying strong through that motion while still you know, doing the squats in such a way that they will help my muscles grow. Not only to lift powerfully and lift heavy, but also have that weight sit in my muscles and help them grow. And speaking of helping muscles grow and staying balanced, you'll notice I don't have my belt on for these sets of 225. Uh, for the past couple of leg days, I have been putting my belt on once I get to 225, but today I wanted to do a couple sets without the belt just to make sure that I keep my, my core strong because my lower back was feeling a little bit tight today and I thought that might have been due to me using a belt with some of my squats earlier on. So today I opted to, to hold off on the belt until I started to get a little bit more serious. But as you'll notice, the first three sets of six at 225, those squats felt really good. I felt really strong through those. And whenever I'm feeling really, really strong with some working sets, I usually tack on some five pound weights on both sides because for me, at least in like working sets, like that's not enough for me to really notice it too much. And I can still do the same amount of reps with that extra 10 pounds on there. But even that extra little 10 pounds, I feel like does make a difference in terms of your overall growth and strength over time. So I went ahead and tacked on two five pound weights and finished off with another three sets of uh, six reps at 235 this time. And I'll mention it once again, being able to eat more food and get, you know, a consistent 4K plus calories a day has been huge for my energy and strength in the gym. Also though, I've changed up my pre-workout slightly. I've introduced the P6 Black back into my pre-workout regimen, and I think using P6 Black on a diet before was still pretty cool, but now adding that in on a bulk is insane. I'm also taking uh, Cellicor's new Alpha Aminos during my workout, and I'm really enjoying those. It keeps me from feeling that sort of like, hollow tired feeling that you get so I can maintain the pump and the energy that I need to power through like two hour workouts so that's awesome really really enjoying adding p6 black and alpha aminos to my regimen still using c4 and n0 as my main pre-workouts I've been using those for about five years now hands down best pre-workouts I've ever had and I definitely recommend them I do want to make a like a my supplements video here pretty soon, so be on the lookout for that. And as you'll notice, I did put the belt on here because I am starting to get into a little bit of heavier weight here. I'm doing 255, which might not be that heavy for some people, but that's getting into my four sets of four reps. So pretty much what I do is with most of my workouts, I do like to ladder up. 
but the real, real quality work starts at the 6x6, then after that I bump the weight up, you know, 20 pounds, and do a 4x4. I hear a lot of people talking about like a, the strength building method of 5x5, five five, and that sounds cool and all, but I don't know, I just prefer either doing 6x6 six six and then 4x4, four four. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting the best of both worlds there by specializing a little bit, who knows. So at this point in my workout, you just saw me do 275 for two, easy. So I decided that this was the time that I was gonna go ahead and go for 315 before I got too fatigued, so. Here we go. Got my buddy there watching my back. Drop down real low and... Oh, that's so easy! Yeah! <laughs> I was so pumped, dude. <laughs> I was so pumped, in fact, that I decided to do it again. So on this one, I'm, I felt really strong in that one rep, so I decided to go for two. And so we drop it down one more time. This first one comes up real easy. The second one, I needed a little bit of a spot on the second one, but hey, this, this rep that I tried to complete there, that's in my system. I've got that one in the bank, so I think I can go for 315 for two here pretty soon, which means that I have matched my all-time PR on squat, which is 315, but I also think I have at least 10 more pounds in the tank, so pretty soon here we're going to be setting a new squat PR, which is very, very exciting. My deadlift, I got a new PR. My squat, I matched my PR. New PR coming for sure soon. Just all it takes is probably like another strong day in a week from now. Probably not my next leg day, but the one after that, Probably we'll try to attempt a new PR. I'm thinking 325 is reasonable. I think we can get that. And then all it takes after that is for me to get back to my benching strength. But we're working on it. My benching has been really, really good in my past couple bench workouts. So during this bulk, I think we're going to see PRs across the board, which is very, very exciting for me. And if you guys go to the gym, you know how exhilarating it is and how satisfying it is to hit new personal records on your lifts. And now I've said this a couple times before, like I'm not lifting for strength. I'm lifting primarily to grow, but of course I do want to get stronger and it's very, very satisfying when I am able to push weight that I've never been able to push before, so I'm really, really proud. Even though people like half my body weight can probably squat 315, it doesn't really matter to me all that much because I was able to do it and I really look forward to squatting more than that very, very soon. Now as you saw, I finished up some of my squatting work. I, I laddered back down just a little bit, I did, I did like one set at uh, 275 again just because I wanted to feel what that felt like. And then I did another couple sets. I think I did three sets at 225. And then I did some front squats, as you saw, and then some straight-legged deadlifts. Now, all these secondary leg exercises, I'm only going to show one set of. I usually do six sets of, like, everything. And the reason for that is because I, that's just what I like. I think that's where I get sufficiently fatigued, and I feel like I've done a good job, so that's what I do. But, I, like I said, I showed you, like, a ton of the squats that I did. I think I showed you like two sets at each weight bracket or something. So that wasn't even the full picture, but that's pretty much how my, my leg workouts go is there's a huge, huge focus on squats in the beginning. And so that's what I focus mostly on. So I guess I'll show you most of that in the video. Plus I was really proud to, to share that 315 lift with you. Now I do put most of my focus and intensity into my squats, but I also do work really, really hard on these secondary exercises. I feel like you pre-exhaust your legs with the big compound movements like the squats and the front squats and the straight-legged deadlifts and then you come over to these isolation machines and see what those muscles have left in them and try to recruit every last muscle fiber you can to try to get those legs to grow. And I mentioned in another video that uh, I feel like I have pretty good calf genetics and it's just a matter of getting these things to develop. And I'm working on it. I do, I do a lot of calves. I, I do calves even on days that aren't leg day. But like I said, I am doing like legs. I would say twice a week, but doesn't the, 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 the quote week doesn't really matter as much to me. But basically what I'm doing is I'm doing squats with leg exercises, obviously, as my leg day, quote leg day. And then I've got chest, and then I do back, and then I do deadlifts. But I, on my deadlift day, I'm also doing these same leg secondary exercises, including leg press. So I basically have two leg days. One of them is a squat day. One of them is a deadlift day. And the reason I decided to do it that way is because deadlift had used to um, be on my back day, but I was so just destroyed uh, from doing deadlifts that I couldn't even like do back day in a way that would be efficient to grow my back. So I decided that I would do back first and then do deadlifts and then have that be a second leg day because I also wanted to have more leg stuff going on. So that made a lot of sense to me. And I think I'm gonna stick with that for a while. And of course, after my uh, deadlift day with legs, I do a shoulder only day followed by a day where I specifically train my arms, like my biceps and my triceps, a little more shoulders. And I also throw some pull-ups in there because I also like to have a little bit of back thrown in there. Plus pull-ups give me an insane pump in my biceps. So I do those that day as well. But yeah, guys, finishing up this leg workout with 
some weighted leg press, the little 45 degree angle leg press. I try to go down pretty low here, almost down to where it would hit that little little stopper there at the bottom. Trying to get a good stretch and squeeze is the last thing I do in my leg workout. Sometimes I do my leg press after my squats, but I decided to give myself a little bit of a break from pressing movements for a moment, do some leg secondary exercises, and then come back and finish off with some leg press. But today was an awesome leg day. I'm feeling really, really good about my training in general. And I hope you guys are enjoying these videos because I'm having a blast posting them for you. So once again, thank you all so much for watching. Keep up the good work in your own fitness journey, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace!